inside. You thought my life was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know you thought my life was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought my life was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought my life was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. Beatstars.com We need to talk about it. Is you gonna be see what I'm doing right now? Who's first name? Nick. I, I remember being from Miss uh, Miss Miss Class. But you can do this too. You know that? You can do some teaching because you read. Tony Douglas said this: Once you learn to read, you will be ever will ever be free. Once you learn to read, you will forever be free. How many of you know who Malcolm X is? Malcolm X said, reading is the passport to the future. Reading, that's your ticket, a passport to get on a plane or get on a boat. So, reading is very important. Reading is fundamental. How many of you have your own libraries in your house? I'm not talking about uh, 2,000 books, but if you have a bookshelf behind your bed, alongside your bed, in your house in the corner, that's your library. You have to keep adding to your library, add science books, add comic books, add urban novels. Uh, whatever you want to add to it, that's your library. Okay, I, I still got you for a couple of minutes, folks. Let me have your attention. All right, so this is life that we live in. Somebody say in the hood, but it's neighborhood, so we have to be more neighborly, friendly, 
in the neighborhood. Not turn the hood, just have a hood scene hood. You know, I was watching the internet. Any of you guys go on the internet, YouTube? What's up with you? I know you do. Yeah, yeah. If you're five years old, you're probably going to go on YouTube. But check this out. So last week they had a peace march in Baltimore. You know Baltimore, right down the street, 83 South. I want to have Baltimore. They have some serious neighborhoods there. A lot of killing, a lot of drug dealing down there. And so they were having a peace rally. This past week, a few days ago, a peace rally, a peace march. And one of the up and coming rappers in Baltimore was shot and killed going home for the peace rally. His name was Lord Scooter. Anybody know that name? Yeah. Now, I read about Lord Scooter, and he had this one song called. Uh, a firefly. A firefly. Anyway, his lyrics are definitely talk about he's glorified, he was glorifying dealers. He said we sell coke, we sell smack, so we can have them coming back. That was his mind. He said, I ain't worried about who's talking about uh, what we're supposed, supposed to be doing, but we, this is what's getting us paid. And so when I think about Crips and Bloods, I think about two things. I think about blood, <laughs> because they're out there with guns shooting. You can be, be come back crippled, you can lose some blood, you can be paralyzed. How many of you have thought about the rest of your life riding around in, the, in a wheelchair? That's my question. Did anybody want to do that? Do you want to need me? How about being paralyzed from the neck down? You know, bullets have no name on them. They don't have a name. They said, this one's for you, this one's not for you. Well, they go off, and we know we've had stuff happen in the area. So what you're doing now with the brothers who are here playing basketball, that's part of it. But as Naquan just called up, I called a name out, he was on it. He said he read three of these books already. In fact, one of these books was written by a brother who, before most of your time, from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Ricky Wallace, with the Bishop of Devon High School. Got drafted, what, got San Francisco first? Eagles, Seahawks, you know, of course you know who uh, Robert Tate is, former student of mine. And let me tell you something about Robert Tate, before you guy was born probably. So back around 1986 when he was in the middle school, Robert Tate used to go up to the Camp Curtin Y. And I would see Tate, I call him Rob. Rob would be running up and down 6th Street, tearing down McClay. Go down the front street. Come on back around. He's a teenager now. Then I go up to the Y. And tape me going doing layups coast to coast. Lay up here. Lay up there. A hundred layups. He was training to be a champion. And you know what? He became a champion. He spent enough time in the NFL that he'll get paid a check. I think if you stay five or six years, you get paid uh pensions. Seven years. And not only that, the first team that he played for was who? Anybody know? Robert Tate, first team? In the NFL. Minnesota. Minnesota Vikings. Do you know where the coach at the time where he was born? What high school he went to? Dennis Green. Dennis Green when he came from Harrisburg Paris, Paris High. He was class president. I understand he was a running back, I believe, while I was there. Went on to coach at Stanford University in California and ended up coaching at Minnesota and then at the Arizona Cardinals where Robert Tate retired his jersey from. So it can be done. Now let me say something else about Robert Tate. I won't keep you long, just a few more minutes. And Robert Tate will tell you about this. I don't have his book here, but I do have his book. So Robert Tate has a head, has, and he'll talk about it. If you haven't heard him talk about it, a learning disability. A learning uh, disability. I'm going to give you a couple words. And don't call them big words. Just if you know what the word means, I'm telling you, the word is cognitive. Say cognitive. That has to do with knowledge, how we learn, our ability to learn. Say affective. Affective means the way we relate to each other, socially, emotionally. So when he reads something, it may be a reversal. Instead of being a B, he may see it as a D. And so his writing and reading suffered because of that. And he got some help for that outside of that. He has an annual foundation, annual bank every year where they raise money for people who have dyslexia, or people who have trouble reading. But that didn't stop him. There are people who are lawyers and doctors who had dyslexia, did you know that? That didn't stop him, so you have to have a vision. So you know, a farmer, the way they keep a straight line, they find a point. They look at that point. 
and they just drive the track towards that point and come back find another point, same thing. Now I used to teach a little dance, a little ballet. Believe it or not, yeah, you sure would. Then Swan who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, did, did ballet. Herschel Walker did ballet. Before your time, Lloyd World Big Free walked to school with, they had to take in college. The brothers had to take ballet classes. Why did they had to take ballet classes in college? Play basketball. These are the NCAA guys. Why? Balance, footwork, but just got limited. They didn't like to wear those leotards and tights. But the coach said, hey, you're going to take ballet 101. And they took it. And so that helped them out. So as I started to say, when I came on, you know who you are. So don't be ashamed about hugging a brother. So I teach drama class and acting classes. The young boys, they say, I don't want to hold his hand. Why not? When you get in a huddle, you hold hands, don't you? And it's still, if you do a layup, you can't hit you in the cheek, you don't say nothing. We know who we are, but showing affection to another brother is okay when it's done in the right way. BeatStars.com